Ahoy Rovers! Well, as many of you know, the 650 has been designed with twin bilge keels coming out at 15 degrees from the hull. Now those ballasted keels have a fair bit of weight and so I have to reinforce the inside of the 650 at the attachment points to take that load. That's what this video is all about. My name's Alan Mulholland and this is the story of how I built the Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now, I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Now the 650, being so small and light, has to be well engineered to be strong. And where the keels, the bilge keels, meet the hull, it's already pretty strong because it's, it's two layers of 9 millimeter plywood, uh, which brings us to approximately 3 quarters of an inch, and it's laminated. So it's already pretty strong. But we're going to be putting in three big pieces of oak that will run athwart ships, distributing the load athwart ships, and that will be the attachment points for the ballasted keels. I've got a lot to do, time to crack on. Okay, so I have three really nice pieces of white oak here. Now it is difficult to tell the difference between white oak from red oak, but there is a big difference. White oak contains at the cellular level a plastic-like substance which makes the wood not only durable, but most importantly waterproof, and that's why white oak is considered a premium boat building wood, especially if it has a possibility of coming in contact with water, which is a possibility when you consider it's right at the sole in the bilge area. Okay, so what I had done in a previous video, I, I had laid out this grid pattern. I, I put in the center line a long time ago, and then I have these athwart ship lines where the ring frames and the bulkheads go. And I also have these two parallel lines here where my longitudinal stiffeners will go. So I have a lot of reference lines here, but my plans also tell me exactly where on this grid that the beam should go. So I've already measured out from the transom to get it accurate, and I've laid out that line. And let's see, we'll just put it on right here. And let's see, there's the line, yeah. And we want it to be running nice and square. Okay, so there we have it, looks good. Now I'm just going to put just a couple of reference lines here and here. Because I'm not going to be able to twist these, these two by twos, but I mean, they are pretty darn straight to start with. Now here's the thing. These lines are center lines, meaning they run to what would be the center of this beam. So now we need to offset those by half the thickness. So when I measure this out, it is one and a three quarter inches. So half of one and three quarters is seven eighths of an inch. So what I need to do now is make a line that's seven eighths of an inch either side you just need to do one though and that will be where one edge so seven eighths good over here
So that's looking pretty good. And now an old carpentry trick is put an X on the off side of that line. So you know you're going to cover the X. And then this piece of oak is probably a little bit long for this. Yep, as it should be, will sit on those lines. So next step is I have to trim this piece back so that it fits nicely in this space. Of course, before I do that, I might as well do the other two while I'm at it. Now one final check you can do is make sure that the on-center spacing between those lines hasn't changed from the on-center spacing we did on the center line. Just a quick check, only take a minute, and boom, it's exactly on. Yep, yeah. so that side is good, and we'll just make sure we are running parallel. Boom, okay. Yeah, great. As long as you're neat and accurate from the very beginning, this is not a chore at all. It goes really, really, well, smoothly, at least so far. All right, time to crack on with fitting the pie, uh, the oak. So there, there's one further step. I'm just going to lay out some index lines, just in pencil here. You don't have to be too accurate. It's for sanding. We need to we need to create a keyway on this fiberglass for the glue to stick. So I just like to have some lines to sand by because I don't need to sand the whole floor. So now it's time to create a template for these and I have two curves. I have a curve coming this way, or an angle rather coming this way, and another angle as we come to the to the bow. So I'm just going to use a bevel, it's very simple. I line it up in line with my line and then just put it into the radius and then make sure the blade of the bevel is running parallel to the side. And it is. And I'll record that on this piece of wood because this is the piece of wood I'll be making a template from. So that's angle one. And we'll just cut that on the miter saw. The second angle is a little more complex. So we'll be running like that. So I'll just use a piece of wood, put it up tight. And that's the angle right here, and I'll mark it. This is number three. And just in case I get confused, I'll put forward and a little arrow. Okay, now with those, I can go and start making my template. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty good fit right there. 
And I've just taken two little strips of just scrap OSB, clamped them together, and I've got both angles looking pretty good. So now I have the length and the primary angle. Okay, so I've just done a test piece here. So this is a what's called a compound cut, compound miter, because we're, we have two angles, one angle going this way and then a separate angle going this way. So it's good to do a test cut just to make sure everything works. And we'll just line this up. And sure enough, that looks good on the top and it looks good on the side. Now this is only an inch and a half tall. Our actual piece of wood is two inches tall, but that nothing will change over that height difference. Okay, so now we can head back to the saw and have pretty good confidence that when we cut that expensive piece of oak, it will fit. So there's two key pieces to making a compound cut. And the first one is to record your angles accurately, which you saw me do with the bevel here. And then the second is to transfer those angles to the saw. So there's two angles you have to do. One is this tilt, and we'll just check that here. So I've, I've transferred to this piece of wood. And then you want, you want to make sure your saw is unplugged at this point, by the way. So bring it down and you're just checking that the angle between the blade and the blade of the bevel is running parallel. And it is. So that's one angle set. And then the second angle is the way the hull uh, meets the, the sole of the boat. Make sure you mark it well and you don't get confused on this. So transfer or record it with the bevel. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then it's the table of the saw you want to adjust. And, and it's, it's already there. Okay, so now I've got the two angles set. I can actually go ahead and make the cut. Now, if you're not used to doing these compound saws, uh, compound cuts, uh, take your time. Redraw the next angle and make sure, stand back and make sure it makes sense with the other end. And when you're happy with it, then set up the saw to make the cut. Okay, so now we have two complementary ends. Time to just take the sander to the end here and just knock a radius off. Okay, so we have this one cut. That's a pretty nice uh, fit. And it has a bit of curvature to it, so I've had to place some weights in the center to get it down uh, closer to the, to the sole. And then over here, again, nice, nice fit. We really couldn't ask for a better fit. Okay, on to the next. So I'm, I'm prepping the area for the big glue up and this is an electric blanket. This is a new idea I'm trying. I need to heat up the floor. I can get the air temperature just fine, 
but the uh, contact temperature on the floor being lower down is a bit tricky so I'm heating it up here with an electric blanket I'll we'll see how this works out now while I'm doing that I'm going to head out with my three beams and put roundovers on them I'd like to take a moment to honor the Wave Rover benefactors. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, the keel timbers are now in place. Now, I made an executive decision to place the timbers like this, with the two inch going across the top and the inch and three quarters coming down the side. And the reason for that is twofold. One, I can get a much larger backing plate and fender washer and nut on the bolt that will be holding the bilge keels in place. And secondly, there was a natural curve to this oak and I tried to get it to follow the curve that's in the uh, bottom of the boat as well. So those were the reasons. I think it was a pretty good job. I really did get an opportunity to take advantage of these temperatures, which today are an unbelievable two degrees outside. So I know with my heaters and the tenting I've done, we got the temperatures up high enough for that glue to kick off entirely. Now, in the next episode, I'll be back to building and fitting bulkheads and I'll be starting with bulkhead number four which is the uh, galley slash chart table the aft end of the galley slash chart table bulkhead and I'd like to get input from from uh, Rover Navy here and find out which do you prefer? Do you prefer your galley on the starboard side or the port side? You see, these are pretty much identical uh, builds, the port, uh, uh, the galley and chart table. I'll just be fitting them out differently, but they're the same size, same dimension, uh, same spot, really. Just one is on the port and one's on the starboard side. So please give me some uh, feedback and do so in the comments section of this video. Now, as always, Rovers, Thanks for watching. Well, Mr. Speckles and I would like to take a moment to thank all the Wave Rover patrons whose pledges of support help power the Wave Rover project. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. <laughs>